Welcome back, and that's not just to you, that's to me, because it's been a little while. I keep getting these uh, big breaks and hiatuses where I just don't produce anything, and it's not for lack of trying. I've just gotten busy in other areas of head first, and unfortunately, this part of it has fallen through the cracks. So I'm hoping that won't happen this time. I've got a lot of good stuff laid out and planned out for this through the next few months, actually. So here's hoping. Hi, I'm Brett Hetherington of Headfirst Studios. Uh, you probably have seen one of these before. If not, welcome. If you have, I'm sorry. <laughs> this week, I just want to take a couple minutes to talk about identity. It's something that's big in my, uh, well, really in all of my life, uh, professionally, personally. I spent over just over a decade as a full-time youth pastor and another four years on top of that volunteering. And through that time, I learned a lot about identity. I learned a lot about the formation of identity. The formation of identity is very, it's critical to a human. It's also a very long-term project. In that 14 years, uh, the very beginning of it, I was just out of high school, I learned that identity is, it's almost fluid uh, in some respects. Uh, especially during the teen years, during adolescence, you're always searching to figure out who you are and who you can be and who you want to be. And it, it seems as if every time you land on who you, you're meant to be, that the rug gets pulled out from under you and you have to start all over again. Now, I experienced this a lot during my teenage years. I experienced it a lot as an adult. Just a couple years ago, I had what I had established as my identity wrongly pulled out from underneath me. Uh, for 10 years, I identified as a youth pastor first. And when I was let go, a lot of that identity just crumbled because I wasn't the youth pastor anymore. And so I had to step back and I had to reform my identity around what was most important. In that time, I was reminded that identity should not rest in one earthly thing. Now, yes, if you're not a Christian, this part of it's going to be a little bit out of left field for you, but hey, I just told you I spent over a decade as a youth pastor. My identity needed to be and continues to need to be rooted first in Christ and the sacrifice he made for me. Then I can start to find my identity in what he's made me to be and what he's made me to do. The big danger in crafting and finding your identity is allowing the things you do to define you. I've heard the old adage that you're a human being, not a human doing, which boils down to you aren't what you do. I've heard of a lot of pro athletes who, once the game is passing by, they have a hard time reacclimating to life outside of the sport. Our identity needs to be rooted in something bigger than us and it can't be a job, it can't be another person, because the job can go at any time. That other person is flawed, and their own identity is tied into something else. Our identity needs to be rooted in something greater than us, which is why I find it so crucially important to place my identity in Christ, because as a believer, he's bigger than I am. He's better than I am. He's perfect and I'm not. So as a human, I've rediscovered my identity. As a business, I've had to plot a, a path for an identity there. The benefit of having my own business and being the only one who works for my business is that I'm free to craft an identity that lines up completely with my own. And hopefully you'll stick around because next week you're going to hear a little more about that. So that's all I have for you this week. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Like I said, next week, I'm going to dive a little bit more into this idea of identity. And uh, like I said, also, I really hope I don't hit another patch where I'm just not producing anything because I, I love to do this. You keep watching. I will keep sharing stories and explorations into the inner workings 